Hey everybody, how's it going? Uh, if you're like me and most Infusionsoft users, lately you may have been absolutely bombarded by spam bots submitting junk in your web forms. The problem with this is that it's not entirely junk. In most cases, they're submitting bogus names, but they're using real email addresses. And this can really mess up your email deliverability. If you're not on top of it, those contacts are ending up in all of your sequences. You're sending follow-up emails to them. They might be getting tagged so that then when you send broadcast, you send broadcast to them. And so spam complaint rates go way up, engagement rates go way down, and your deliverability therefore suffers big time. So it's actually really important that we uh, clean up those contacts uh, and ideally we make sure that they don't ever even get into our Infusionsoft account. So over the last little while I've been testing some things and trying to you know completely block these guys from getting in. You know once they're in it's fairly easy to set up some rules and things like that to find them, tag them and whatnot. Uh, there's you know usually some patterns that you can identify, you can build those into some decision diamonds and all that kind of stuff, but that's a hassle. Uh, we should be able to just block them from getting in in the first place. So I figured, hey, I'll be really smart and I'll write some JavaScript on our website to prevent these bots based on the patterns that we see. So some patterns that we were seeing is um, first names starting with the number five. You've probably seen that one before. We also saw a lot of them where the first name and the last name are kind of semi gobbledygook, uh, so somewhat of a real name, but then with some extra characters maybe. And usually the first name and last name were exactly the same. And also usually, but not every time, in those situations, the phone number was an 11 digit number starting with the number eight. And so what I did is I wrote some JavaScript that would identify these patterns. And if uh, the patterns matched, then it um, would not let the form be submitted. Here's the problem. The bots most likely do not have JavaScript enabled. They don't honor JavaScript. And so whatever JavaScript you write to prevent that kind of stuff just doesn't work. The other thing that we're noticing is that even if you take down a page that had a form on it, uh, the bots are still submitting to the form. So what they're probably doing is scraping the form code off of the website, and then they've got it stored somewhere and they just continue to submit to it. So we've actually determined that there are two things that need to happen so that uh, we can prevent the spam bots. The first thing is we actually leverage the fact that they're not using JavaScript when they originally scrape the page. Okay, So if you're familiar with JavaScript, you know that you can write some script code in a script tag, but then you can also tell it, hey, if they don't have JavaScript enabled, then put this on the page instead. And so we're using that mechanism so that when a bot comes and originally scrapes, they don't see the form code. We're also splitting up the code, uh, or at least the, the code, I didn't mention the code, the form code is being written by JavaScript, right? And so I'll get into this in a minute. It's a little bit technical, um, but really anyone can do this. It's not that hard. Um, so the, the form code, instead of just being pasted right into the HTML of the page, we're writing it with JavaScript. But we're also splitting up the form code so that it's written by a couple of different JavaScript statements. That way, even if a bot reads through the code and identifies, oh, there's form code here within the JavaScript, it can't just take it all and run. Uh, the, the bot would have to be a little bit smarter than that. and would have to be able to parse in between a couple of different JavaScript statements, which is probably not gonna happen. It's definitely possible. The way I see this is it's kind of like, um, you know, when you park your car in a parking lot and thieves might go along and look for cars uh, that are unlocked. If they're unlocked, then they're just gonna open, look what they can find, grab it and go and get out of there, right? But if it's locked, they're likely just gonna keep moving forward until uh, they find a car that's unlocked, right? Now, could they break into the car that's locked? Yeah, probably, there are ways to do it. Um, so same thing with the code. By, by having JavaScript write it and having, by having JavaScript write it in a couple of different statements, it's not 100% foolproof, but it's most likely gonna stop a lot of the bots from finding the code. Okay. The second thing is we need to make it so that 
if they've already captured that code and they've got it stored somewhere and they're submitting to your form, we need to make it so that they can't submit anymore. And uh, the way we do that is by adding a required checkbox to the form. Okay, so it's a little bit silly, um, also easy and also technical all at the same time. So let me switch over to the browser and kind of walk you through what's happening here. So first, let's start with a, a page. So here's a page that we have on our website with a contact us form. Okay, pretty basic Infusionsoft form here. So we got name, email, phone, subject, message, etc. right? Uh, nothing real special there. And the bots got a hold of this form and we were getting a lot of bot submissions through this form. So what we did, uh, first step, let's log in to WordPress. I'll take you in there and we'll take a look at that page and I'll show you how we altered the form code. Okay, let me just refresh here. Quickest, easiest way to get to the page once we're logged in. Why is my WordPress stuff not loading? What's going on here? Guess I didn't get logged in all the way. Okay, so now we're gonna just navigate back. Contact us. All right, here we are. So we're gonna edit the page. All right, so we're using here uh, WP Bakery. If you're familiar with that, uh, it's just a page builder. And one of the snippets it has is to drop uh, raw HTML in there. So here's Infusionsoft. Here's the, actually not that, so that's not it. That's the chat form. Here's our contact us form right here. We'll double click there. And what we typically do is go to the code tab. We go to the HTML unstyled. We copy, we come over to our page and we just paste it right in there, okay? And so that's what we had done. And then to prevent the bots, what we do is we take that form code. Now this gets a little tricky um, because you need to be able to follow the code, right? So what you do is you start with a, a script tag and then what you do is you break up the, the form code, okay? So here we have document.write, and then we have the first part of the form code. Now, in this case, I wrote, I broke it up into three different document.write statements. I'm not sure if that's necessary, but I just know it has been working. <laughs> um, and so I, I actually stopped uh, part the way through that form tag, and then I start another document.write statement uh, to finish the rest of the form tag, and then, um, actually not the entire form tag, and then I did another document.write statement to finish the form tag uh, right here, and then all the rest of the code, okay? And then just to be safe, we've got a no script tag here that tells um, any browser that doesn't have JavaScript enabled that they must have JavaScript enabled to use the contact us form, okay? So if the if the bots are really lazy and they're not looking through JavaScript code, they're just looking what's rendered on the page, then all they'll see is this uh, H1 tag that says you must have JavaScript enabled to use the contact us form. If they're a little smarter and they're just scraping through the code looking for form code, they might start. They might see this right here, the start of the form, but they don't see the rest of it, or at least if they do, if they go, oh, here's a form, and they follow it all the way to the close form tag, it's not gonna work because there's some JavaScript stuff uh, included in there. Um, so that's how we essentially hide the form. But again, like I mentioned earlier, uh, if they've already scraped that form, they've already got it and they're submitting to it, and then we add one extra step to that. And that is in the form itself, we add a checkbox, okay? So what we do is we come in here to our field snippets and we throw a checkbox in here and lately I've just been calling it spam trap, okay? And then I make it required, all right? And then I go ahead and save. We need to then back out and publish it. Okay, once it's published, we can hit edit again, and we'll go into the form and go to the unstyled code, copy, 
Now we're going to go back to our page. Now I've already got the form code in here. So um, what I'm going to do is just paste what I just copied under here. I'm going to get rid of all this extra stuff because I don't, I don't need it. I've already got it. What I need is that checkbox code, right? So I'm going to get rid of this label stuff, get rid of all the rest. Okay. If you're if you're doing this with a brand new form, um, you know this this won't be necessary to delete all this extra stuff because you'll already have it in there. Um, but I've got this code here, and so what I'm gonna do is instead of having type equals checkbox, I'm gonna make it type equals hidden. That way, when the form is submitted on my page, the user doesn't see the checkbox, but the value does get submitted, and since it's required, it will go through. But the form code that the spam bot has doesn't have that field in it. And if the spam bot tries to submit it, Infusionsoft's going to say, oh, that's a required field. You cannot submit without that required field. So I'm just going to paste that up here with all my other hidden fields. Um, now, in this case, I had changed my quotes to single quotes. You just have to be consistent here. What I would recommend is Infusionsoft gives you um, all of the code with double quotes. Infusionsoft is consistent in that manner. So you're gonna to wanna to wrap your document.write statements in single quotes because all of Infusionsoft code is in double quotes. I've got it kind of reversed on this particular page for no reason, <laughs> no good reason anyways. Um, so you don't wanna do it the way that I did it here. But that's the idea. Now that I've got that spam trap uh, hidden field in there, um, again, when I update here, the user who's visiting my site won't see that hidden field. When they submit the form, looks like I messed up something in my quotes there. When they submit the form, they um, it will be passed, that value will be passed, and since it's a required field, uh, everything will work just fine. There we go, I think that was the problem. So everything will work just fine for the user. But again, the spam bots won't be able to submit that form because um, Infusionsoft is going to be requiring that checkbox. So again, it's a fairly basic concept. It's a little technical to implement, uh, but ever since we implemented this in our business, uh, it's been working just fine. Uh, and we don't have any more spam submissions coming through uh, because again, they're not able to scrape the code easily. Uh, to get new submissions in and any old code that they had isn't working because they don't have that checkbox in there. So hopefully this helps. Um, if you need some help implementing this, uh, feel free to reach out to us. We'd be happy to help you. Um, I'm going to put uh, in this blog post um, where I'm posting this video, I'm going to put some detailed instructions on how to do this. Uh, so hopefully that helps. And uh, you know, you can send this uh, video and this blog post to your webmaster if you want them to do it. It's uh, pretty straightforward for someone who knows what they're doing. All right, thanks. Hopefully this helps, and uh, we'll talk to you soon.